Hey, hey, welcome, and this is my Minecraft piston that I made. So, if I press the button, it'll extend, and if I let go, it'll unextend. So, let's sliggity slack, crickety crack, get right into it. So, I'm just going to use a knife and break some spots that I melted together. Here you go, for uh, showing what's inside. Here is the microcontroller I'm using. This is an Elegoo Uno board with the Atmega 328P. All I have hooked up, the servo that it's using, data line on three, power to five volts, and finally the ground to ground. I have a button that's hooked up with a resistor and it's hooked up to pin number two on the board over here. And so when I press the button, I have the code be able to sense it and it sends signals over to the main piston. With the servo, I printed a arm that it will extend it and unextend it. You can see that the shaft doesn't go completely out. Even if it was to completely extend, it still wouldn't be able to push a full block so that's one of the limitations of this design. If you wanted to make it push one whole block, then you'd have to extend it twice in this range of motion. In order to hold both shafts together, I just used a push pin and then just jabbed it in. And now taking it off, we're able to take the head part off. I have the servo fit in with a screw so you can see it's completely serviceable if anything were to happen right here the first design i couldn't get the overhang printed and so i just ended up melting it so in the file that i uploaded you'll see that it does have an overhang added and that should print pretty good here's the piston working with the atmega 328p you can switch it over to a smaller microcontroller the at tiny 85 power to power the ground to ground and finally the sending signal over to the pin zero the problem with using the at tiny is that since the clock is an 8-bit not a 16-bit like the at mega then you have to use a different code this one's using software servo library and using the servo update you can hear there's some jitteriness and pressing the button, you'll see it'll extend and then unextend. And then just spam it completely. On the other hand, the Atmega also has an issue. If I spam it, it will stop working completely, like right there. Right there also. So it seems to have a limit to how fast you can spam it. The AT Tiny seems to better handle the fast pressing. All right, so here's a code. And before you say freak code, all my homies hate code. Keep an open mind because it's very simple. First line right here, it's just including a library. And what a library does is just makes it simpler to code by already having a bunch of similar code put into one specific area. By using this, you're able to initialize a servo by calling servo and naming it whatever you want. Right here, it's called my servo. Next up is the void setup of the Arduino code. And in this, you're gonna to wanna to initiate the servo again by attaching it to a pin number right here. It's on pin number three. Next up, you initialize pin number two to be an input pull-up. And what that means is that when it is connected to ground, it will be able to detect that and be called low. If it's not connected to ground, it will be called high. So after that, in the void loop, in the first line is just creating a variable called reading. And in this variable, it's checking 
pin number two to see if it is connected to ground or not connected to ground. If it's not connected to ground, it'll read high. And so when it reads high, it's gonna make the servo move or the piston is not pushed out. It's gonna do a delay of 15 before checking if it is low, if pin number two is connected to ground. Using a button, we're able to switch pin number two from not being connected to ground to being connected to ground when the button is pushed. So if we push the button, reading will turn to low. And so after it reads low, the servo will move to the extended position. Now for the ATtiny85 code, you can see it's similar except we're now using software servo library. And here in a similar way, we have the initialization of the servo. This time I just called it servo. Next up, similarly, we have in the void setup, the servo attach. This time on pin zero, because pin zero is a pulse width modulation pin, which means it's able to send very precise short signals to the servo. Next up, we have servo set maximum pulse. This was from the example code, so I just kept it here and it works fine. After that, we have pin mode three input pull up. And this initializes pin three as a pull up resistor, detecting whether or not a button is pushed, leaving it to ground. In the loop, we have again, reading, this time reading pin number three. And if it's reading high, then we write to position 89. We wait a delay of 100, and then we write to 14 if the button is pushed, extending the piston. And again, a delay of 100. The main difference from software servo and the servo library is that we need to use the software servo refresh on the ATtiny since it's an 8 bit clock. The software servo refresh does make the servo bounce a little bit back and forth, but it's extremely important to call after this loop, making sure that it's out of the if statements and inside the void loop. Without the refresh, it wouldn't be as snappy and it would only activate some of the times that the button is pushed. So if you have any questions, let me know. And thank you for watching.